Hi everyone. So I've been watching this new documentary about Andy Warhol on Netflix and that got me thinking about you know his film work which I find really interesting and uh, I had read a book on his films a while back. It was a collection of essays talking about different aspects of the films and one of the things that struck me was uh, how he really, you know, Warhol really pushed the limits of the technology at the time to explore these kind of extended takes, these uh, unbroken takes, single take films, that kind of thing. Um, and as an example, you know, they talked about his using a, a camera that shot, it was basically a 33 minute reel and he would shoot the entire reel in a single take, unbroken, you know, with actors, uh, you know, oftentimes improvising. And he would usually shoot two of these reels at a time and end up with a 66 minute movie. And, you know, of course, I think about now with digital technology, you're really only limited by what file size, you know, the uh, storage capacity of your, of your, um, you know, SD card, your camera, what, you know, whatever you're shooting on the hard drive, hard drive of your camera phone, whatever it is that you're shooting on. And, uh, you know, this, so this is something, this is an approach to filmmaking that has really intrigued me recently, which is drawing out a shot and holding it for a, an unusually extended length of time. Uh, I did this when I was making Endless August. You know, there's a shot in there where I'm looking out at the ocean and I held it for, I think the shot is held for like seven and a half minutes or something. And... That is, uh, that's an idea that I pretty much uh, got directly from reading about Andy Warhol's films. Uh, that, that was something that in a more conventional narrative film, I would not do. But with a film like Endless August, which, you know, for me is, it's experimental in the sense that I'm trying things that I maybe haven't done before or wouldn't normally do in a more uh, traditional narrative film. Uh, that was something I wanted to try, was trying to evoke the uh, mood that comes out of that image, you know, watching this kind of rough sea on a, on a gray, uh, kind of stormy day and letting it play out. And so that's something I actually uh, was uh, kind of inspired to try after reading about Andy Warhol's films. And his films are actually rather difficult to see. I've been able to find a few online, but I think when you look at the... Uh, sheer number of movies that he made, I, it, it makes you realize that most of them, um, as, as far as I know, are actually fairly hard to see. One of the other uh, things that he did that I, I find really interesting were his uh, screen, tests, uh, screen test series, where he would sit people down in front of the camera and focus it on their face for an extended period of time and, you know, I guess try to capture something of their personality by having the just having the camera focus on them and uh you know nothing nothing really happening but just allow it to be a photographic study and see how people react when they're kind of under the under the lens of the camera like that and i think that's a that's a really interesting um idea that's something i feel other directors have explored in their own ways uh, if you look at carl dreyer's passion of joan of arc for example uh with which is a film filled with close-ups. And I also think John Cassavetes uses this uh, technique very well. In fact, I think Cassavetes said there's uh, the most, something to the effect that the most you know, incredible landscape is the human face. And I think that's something that, um, that's also something that I find interesting you know, for myself in making films is that, that kind of focus on, on people and how much you can, uh, you know, in, interpret about somebody when uh, they're, when you use this kind of extended take and, you know, just putting them in front of the camera. Something I find interesting about improv acting, for example. Uh, I think you have to have the structure of the project in order to facilitate that, uh, which is, like I said, in a more traditional narrative film, that can be harder to do. You're working with certain, uh, sometimes with certain expectations and certain conventions. And of course, you're, you know, free to, uh, break those and alter those however you want uh, for your own purposes. But that for me is where it, you know, it becomes something a bit more uh, experimental is when I'm kind of moving away from the 
traditional approaches and trying something different. And I think that's uh, get, getting back to, you know, this idea of digital technology and how I could imagine somebody like Andy Warhol really pushing the limits of that, really ex exploring that in some interesting directions. That's, a, that's another example of how this, uh, te the technology facilitates this kind of experimentation. Um, you know, Andy, I mean, probably his most famous film, perhaps his most audacious film at a conceptual level uh, was uh, Empire, which I think ran something like eight hours. You know, it's a, it's a more or less static shot of the Empire State Building uh, as, as the, uh, it, it, at the end of the day, as, it turn, as, as day turns to night. And, you know, this is another interesting example for me of, of this approach, because while I have not seen the whole film, I have seen some clips of it, but uh, specifically what I find interesting about this is what do you start to focus on in a shot that is held for an inordinate amount of time? And I think that as a viewer, I mean, forget about even as a filmmaker, but even as a viewer, it can be a, a uh, it's almost like an experimental viewing experience to take in an image that way and to really allow yourself to focus, but also to see kind of where your mind drifts. And that was uh, something else when I was making Endless August and I had this idea of holding this extended shot of the ocean. Um, I wondered, you know, when people watch this, and I think it's different f probably for every viewer, I, I imagine, but I was kind of curious, you know, how long can your focus hold on this image and think about what you're seeing and how long will it be before your attention uh, and thoughts start to go off in different directions? Uh, so, and I don't... I think that's, you know, I think that's a uh, really in interesting way of watching a movie is to think about, you know, you spend all this time with this image and it's just like in, uh, you know, in uh, real life. If you find yourself daydreaming, for example, and, you know, you find yourself staring at a particular object or uh, what it, whatever it may be, and you, but you're not even aware that you're staring at it, your, your mind has kind of completely... Uh, zoned out and gone somewhere else. And I do think that this is a, an effect that can be produced when you make a film this way and you hold on these kind of images. So I think this type of filmmaking, uh, whether we're talking about from Andy Warhol or anybody else, it rewards patience. And I think that's one of the things that I like about it because so often, uh, and I'm not going to, I'm not even talking about, you know, movies that are uh, edited in a you know, kind of cut, cut, cut fashion. Um, but just when you think about all the, just in day-to-day in -day life generally, all the distractions that we're faced with, especially with, you know, multitasking and computers and different screens and devices, you think about that kind of time spent with a concentrated uh, focus on a single image. It can be a rare thing these days. And I do think it's interesting to see what happens when we do that, whether that's through the act of filming it or the act of watching what somebody else has filmed. And that's one of the reasons that I love, you know, what I, and I guess a lot of other people call observational cinema, of just setting the camera up and, and letting things unfold in front of it. I think it's, uh, it's important to remember when you see something like that, that there is a reason that a filmmaker has chosen to do that, uh, to, to capture that particular image, to point the camera in that, particular direction to focus the attention on uh, whatever it is you're looking at. And I think one of the things that's really rewarding when you watch it is to um, kind of give yourself over to that viewing experience and to see where it takes you and see where, uh, like I said, where your thoughts and your concentration uh, take you. Because it can, I, I think it can uh, take you to some kind of interesting uh, places. And uh, so, you know, anyway, I, these were just a few thoughts that came to me after w watching some of this Andy Warhol documentary, and I'll look forward to watching the rest of it. As I said, I'm only about halfway through, but, uh, you know, I, I hope that there is um, more discussion of his film work specifically, because I find that to be, I find him to be a really fascinating artist in general. And I will especially be interested to see what they have to say about um, more of his film work. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video, and I will talk to you later.